Hey folks, what is the complement of the complement of a set? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. This is a viewer requested video. I always appreciate those viewer requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. Now, by the nature of this video, I'm gonna use the words set and complement a lot, which sometimes can fry your brain when the same word is being said over and over and over again. So you might prefer to look up a written explanation of the double complements of sets. But if you dare watch the rest of this video, let's get into it. The short answer is let A be a set. Then the complement of the complement of A is the set A itself. And it's basically the same idea as double negatives. When you're a kid, for example, you might be asked to make a promise to your parents, like, I promise I'm not going to eat any more cookies. And you might try to be a little clever about it and say, I am not not going to eat any more cookies. And there's two things going on there. There's not eating cookies. If you're going to not not eat more cookies, that means you are going to eat more cookies. The two nots, the two negatives, cancel out. And it's the same idea for set complement. Recall that we have to take the complement of a set with respect to some other set. Perhaps most common, we take what are called absolute complements. This is taking the complement of a set with respect to some universal set, which is often called U, and it could be any set depending on the context. The important part about considering a universal set is when we're considering a universal set, Every other set is always a subset of the universal set. We're only talking about absolute complements in this video. Another possibility is that you might consider relative complements between two sets that are not necessarily, uh, they might not be subsets of each other. Either one could not be a subset of the other. Now, the double complement thing works a little different for that situation. It's very similar, but there's an important difference. After this lesson, I encourage you to figure out exactly how that works on your own and let me know what you think in the comments. Now, without any further ado, uh, let's quickly look at this example. Here's a universal set. It contains the numbers 0 through 9. Then we've got this subset of the universal set called A, which contains the even numbers 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. The complement of A contains all elements in the universe, in the universal set, that are not in A. So in this case, A complement contains the odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So what are we going to get if we take the complement of A complement? Well, the complement of A complement contains the elements not in A complement, which means the complement of A complement contains the elements that are not odd which means it contains the even elements, which means it is A. The complement of the complement of A is A. So we have that A is equal to the complement of the complement of A. I'm using this handy prime notation for the complement sets, but some other common notations you might be familiar with are using a C in the superscript, or another one that I like a lot is a bar over the top, a bar. That's another common complement notation. We're using the lovely prime notation, though, for this lesson. So there's an example of seeing the double complement, which is sort of a double negative, in action. If an element is in A, well, A contains the even numbers. So A has even numbers. A complement has numbers that are not even. So the complement of A complement has numbers that are not not even. In other words, numbers that are even, that's why we get right back to A. Now I'll erase this and we'll take a look at uh, a bit more of a uh, explanation based more on the definition. Let's just say that A is a set, an abstract general set, not necessarily the one we were just talking about. Let A be a set. So what is the complement of A? Well, roughly speaking, the complement of A contains all elements that are not in A. I say roughly speaking because, of course, we have to define some universal set so that A complement, to be precise, contains everything that isn't in A but is in the universal set, but we can just sort of speak a little loosely right now. The complement of a set contains the elements not in the set. So then what do we get if we take the complement of that? And again, I'm just offering different explanations of the same thing here. So as soon as you think you got it, you can book it. But let's keep talking for now. 
The complement of the complement of A, by definition of set complement, has to contain the elements that are not in the complement of A. Well, to not be in the complement of A, you have to not fit this condition. The condition being not being an element of A. So if you don't fit the condition that you're not in A, that means you are in A. So as it turns out, the complement of the complement of A is just going to contain the elements of A. It's going to be the exact same set. So just another sort of reasoning through why if we take two complements, we're just going to end up right back where we started at A. Now, to make an another way I think makes this clear is with diagrams, Venn diagrams. Super useful with sets to use Venn diagrams. So let's give that a try and then we'll call it a day. We're going to let this big rectangle be U, our universal set. And so we can take absolute complements with respect to this universal set. I got to slow down and take a breath. Now in orange, we will draw our set A. Orange is a fine color, so here is our set A. What is the complement of A? By definition, the complement of A is the set containing everything outside of A that is in our universe. Everything out here that isn't in A. That's a complement. So we can shade that with these faded green lines. Looks like I've got to get a new green dry erase marker. So everything outside of A that is in the universe, that is the complement of A. So clearly, what are we going to get if we take the complement of the green stuff? We're going to get everything in the box that isn't shaded green. And the only hole in the shading is the set A itself. So when we take the complement of A, when we take the complement of this set, poof, we shade everything outside of A. But then when we take the complement of that, boom, we go right back into our set A. So the complement of A complement, the complement of A complement, turns out it's just the set A itself. And again, all of this is true specifically for absolute complements. Just saw a little bug fly by me. It works slightly different for relative complements. An important feature here when we're taking the complement of A is that we're taking the complement of A with respect to a set that contains A because it's a universal set. So that's very important and there's a bit of a difference when we're considering, considering relative complements that don't work quite like this. They're very similar, but they don't work quite like this. And again, I encourage you to write out some examples of your own with relative complements. I'll leave relevant lessons about set complements and relative complements in the description. So if you're a little foggy on any of these ideas, you can check the description, hopefully find something that will help you out. I hope this video helped you understand the double complement of sets. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.